Hi, my name is Paweł Spechalski and today we're gonna take a short course how to correctly, and by mean correctly I mean really in a proper way, set up a failsafe on both Eferskies, both Horus and Taranis, and the INAV. Because failsafe is probably the most important element of the model you really should set up. It, without correctly set up failsafe, you will probably sooner or later just lose your model because either it will fly away or fall for the sky or completely do something crazy. Failsafe. Over the last few years, there were at least few misunderstandings how failsafe should be uh, should be configured inside of the OpenTX. <sighs> Let's go to the failsafe. Let me zoom in, maybe looking so you can see everything. First, let's go to the settings of the failsafe mode. What you have here, you have hold, not set, that means there is no failsafe, hold, custom, when you can set custom values to the channels, and no pulses. The, okay, I will zoom out because I will not need this page anymore. There is a, let's say a misunderstanding what does no pulses mean. If you are using, for example, PWM output, almost not, not happening right now, or PPM output, the correct way to set up failsafe here in OpenTS, the X, if you are using a flight controller, indeed is to use no pulses. So when the receiver's receiver loses connection with the radio, it stops sending pulses and the flight controller, like INAV, Betaflight, Pixhawk or anything else, detects the fact that there are no pulses coming from the radio to the flight controller and goes into a failsafe. But it's not exactly the same with SBUS and F-port and I don't know about Crossfire protocol, but probably also. Because those are all serial protocols, especially SBUS, the most popular protocol right now. There is not such a thing as no pulses. It doesn't setting no pulses doesn't mean that there are no pulses. Receiver always fits the flight controller with a SBUS frame. The only difference is one bit. One bit in frame set, I am in a failsafe. The failsafe flag is on. Please go into failsafe mode. But the values are constantly set. If this is not hold, then what is set, sent? Some defaults, some defaults. And if you are not 100% sure that the flight controller you are using and the software does everything correctly with all the changing firmwares left and right on the upper sky, it's a nightmare. It's a nightmare, it's a nightmare for the flight controller to correctly interpret all the channel values and the failsafe flag. This is why if you are using SBUS on the Eversky OpenTX, do not set no pulses. Set it to hold. It might sound strange, but it's a correct way to do it. Because if you set it to hold, it will just keep sending the same values for all the channels like before, plus the failsafe flag. So the flight controller will either way know that there is a failsafe scenario and should react. Sounds strange? See it by yourself. Test it by yourself. See by yourself that this is really working if you don't believe me. Because why should you? I'm just a guy on this side of the computer screen telling you something and pretending I know everything because I don't know everything. I saw some but not everything. Test it. Always test the failsafe after every change you do. 
and try. Set hold with SBUS. No pulses with PPM. When it comes to settings of the face safe inside of the ANF, the situation is much simpler than on the radio. All what you really, really have to do on the failsafe tab is set the failsafe procedure. Of course, if you are really prepared to like go into documentation and tutorials and wikis and stuff like that, there are not really many options to choose. Because you can choose drop, land, RTH or do nothing. What's the difference? What the drop does? Drop, in case of a failsafe, disarms your UAV in just drops or glides to the air. Absolutely, absolutely no additional things will happen. Land, on the other hand, triggers the emergency landing procedure when throttle. On the multi-rotors, it just set the throttle, keeps the stabilization, but it just more or less falls and cuts the motors after 200 milliseconds. No, two, two seconds, sorry, because this is 110. No, after 20 milliseconds. Oh, I was wrong. So we just, and will disarm after 20 seconds. On the aeroplane, fixed wing, it will go into glide and more or less also try to I don't say land, but like do not kill anyone in the process. On the other hand, RTH. RTH will be working only and only when you have the GPS and the magnetometer and all that stuff configured because the UAV, either multi-rotor or the aeroplane, will try to return to the point when you aren't and land. Personally, and do nothing means literally do nothing. It will just keep going. I either use drop or RTH. Never tried to do nothing because I would like my failsafe to do something and never really used land because why should I? On something that it's not equipped with the GPS and it's not capable of return to home, set a drop. It's always safer to disarm than to hit the ground with propeller spinning. Just drop. and. Do not fly over people, but this is a different story. On everything that I fly and has the GPS and is RTH capable, all my airplanes currently and all my quads above 5 inches, they are, I just set it to RTH. That's all. Really no other options is required. In older versions to INAF it was a good idea to set this to zero for the fixed wings. So you do not disarm when you want just to glide, but right now it's not so important. I still do it because, because why not? And failsafe kill switch, never used it in my life. If I want to disarm, I just disarm with a switch. One more thing that you might consider checking and setting is here in the advanced tuning, the one. RTH altitude mode when you set the failsafe to do return to home. Is it at last fixed extra current? I usually use at least. Uh, and also land after RTH. Default, default behavior is always to land after RTH, but if you don't want, you can set it to only to failsafe or never. In this case, after RTH, it will just hover or circle around your point and when the battery will go down, it will just fall. Personally, I just leave it on always because when I want to return to home, I usually want this thing to land. And what? And that's all, yeah. Nothing else over here, I think. Oh, emergency landing speed, but leave it on defaults. If you really don't want to go into all the details, leave everything else on defaults. And test it. Always, always test it. Did I set tested? Yes, test your face safe. Let me repeat one more time. Do not trust a random guy on the internet that says he knows it all because nobody knows all. In when you are dealing with fail safe, always test what you set on the bench. It's worth it. 
You will not lose a model probably thanks to this. You will not hurt someone. Do not trust me by words. Do not just blindly do what I told you. Do. <laughs> okay, try doing what I told you because this is better. I hope so. But always test. This is why before switching to hold in case of SBUS, check if this is really working for you. Failsafe is not a joke. The most important safety mechanism in flight controllers is failsafe. Always test. Always, always, always. Okay, I got slightly pessimistic, but right now at least you should understand that in case of SBUS there is not such a state as no pulses and there are always pulses plus a flag saying that this is a failsafe state. And uh, in case of PPM and PWM, no pulses is the correct way, while for SBUS not exactly. Check what I told you, see by yourself, and until the next one, check the links in the description. Bye-bye!